advice do you give to patients that you see so that they can feel empowered, Dr. Okunsanya? I mean, if, if there is there any specific advice that you give when you see patients and things that just help them to take this active uh, role that you've been describing? So number one, I, I tell patients to bring someone with them to their appointments, someone who can stand by if, if, as, as within reason, someone who can be there to listen as well. Because usually I say, if I tell you a hundred things in an appointment, which, which can legitimately happen, I could give you a hundred unique points of information in one, in one 45 minute visit. If you catch 30 of them or 30 or five of them, and you really understand that. I think that's a lot because it's a very emotionally charged environment. So hopefully someone else that's with you maybe catches another 30 or 40. And that gets you to a point where you can really sit down later and understand. I encourage patients to take notes, to write things down, and if they want to, to record, to have audio recording of the session. I wouldn't say anything to you now that I wouldn't say in a month or in a year or anywhere else. I'm gonna tell you exactly what I think and and if I have uncertainty, I will expose that uncertainty. I will let you know that this is a case that could go either way. And this is a piece of information that I'm looking back and forward between those two options. And that really helps the patients later on go back and say, did I really hear that right? Did I really understand it right? So that you can be, feel like you're getting the best care. And I really think that um, you, you have to make sure that you feel comfortable with the provider. I think that's just the number one thing. Are you happy with them? Did you like the way they comported themselves? Did you like the way they spoke to you? Did you like their staff? Also, remember, you're likely going to be interacting with their staff as much as you interact with the physician. So the other people in the office, the front desk people, the nurse practitioners, the uh, the medical assistants, those are the people that you're going to spend a lot of time talking to. Did you have a good rapport with them also? All that stuff counts to making sure that you're getting the best experience possible and that you can really be an advocate. I just want to reiterate, you, you, you shared so many pearls today, but I just want to reiterate a few of them. And they really resonate with me as a former caregiver and as a health advocate. Um, but that's, you know, the importance of asking questions, um, the importance of bringing a buddy. And I appreciate that, particularly in your field. You know, when we go into a doctor's office and the word cancer is uh, stated, everything else goes out of the window. And, and even in, in less threatening situations, there's data that shows that I think about 20 to 25% of what we say as physicians is actually yeah. retained. So certainly when you get a bad diagnosis, that number is even lower. So yeah. bringing somebody with you who is not necessarily emotionally detached, but they can literally kind of be the note taker mm-hmm. and they may even pick up on some nuances and things that you may have missed as a patient is, is so incredibly important. I, I love that you've offered the option of recording. I think that's also another tool that many patients and family members aren't aware of. And I think there's an assumption and it's true to some degree that doctors mm-hmm. don't wanna be recorded, yeah. but knowing that that is an option, um, the fact that the care that we receive really is impacted by whether or not the person specializes in lung cancer, you know, a thoracic surgeon and and being empowered to ask that question, you know, is this your specialty? Uh, How often do you see patients like me? And and being empowered to ask those questions that ultimately will lead to improved care is just so incredibly important. And and I think just everything that you've shared that really um, allows the patients and the caregivers to understand just how important their role is. I mean, you're the one that's going to you know, take out the cancer and you're the one that's going to get them better. But there's so many things that happen before that step, before they are on that operating room table that is so important. I think for patients and their advocates, I think it's really important to remember that you're you're putting together a healthcare team. You're putting together a group of people like the Avengers. You're putting together a bunch of people to come together to help you deal with this health problem you are entering into a therapeutic relationship. So that relationship has to be healthy in order for you to have the best possible outcome. And you should feel good about it. You know, your, your, your doctors are gonna be very skilled. They're gonna be very knowledgeable. And just like we talked about before, you really wanna find someone who has the heart of a teacher, someone who can sit down and explain it to you in a way that's gonna be digestible and that is gonna be actionable. So I think, I think if patients and advocates remember that you want to build a really solid, really healthy relationship with someone who's going to help you do, take care of your health, I think if you do that, you're going to be an excellent patient. 